Today's effort is we're gonna do a setup of a new domain name. And uh, here we go, okay, cool. So I'm here in my Google Chrome and you'll notice immediately that inside Chrome, I've got a different profile picture. Well, you might not notice that immediately, but I noticed that immediately. So I've got a different profile picture here and this is a different Chrome profile. So usually when I'm logged into Chrome, I've got my IT Genius account logged in and that basically gets me access to everything inside my Google Workspace account. So I've signed into another account. This is my test account, but uh, it's got a really long domain name that I don't like, test.reseller.itgenius.com.au. And then I'll go to domain name. I'm gonna see if we can change this to a shorter domain name, which is easier to remember. And I'm gonna change my email address to the new domain name that I add. Now, I'm not sure exactly how this is gonna to go, to be honest, because this is a special Google account that we get from Google as a free testing account to basically do whatever we want with. We can create as many users as we want. We can have our whole team on there. We can break it and we don't have to pay for it, which is great. But I don't know if there's any restrictions like perhaps changing the domain name. I don't know, let's see how we go anyway. But we're gonna do some work on this. So I happen to be a super administrator on this account. So of course I can go to my admin panel, admin.google.com and log in. It's gonna ask me for my passcode here and then I'm gonna be able to sign in. And right now this is pretty much brand new. So I'm gonna to have to go ahead and add, you know, my last pass and stuff like that to this Chrome profile. So, you know, bear with me. It's probably gonna take me a little bit of time to get everything uh, configured and, and working here. There'll be some extra kind of passwords and logins that I gotta do, but anyway, we'll, we'll get there. So what we're gonna start with is, we're gonna start with working on this domain name. So I'm in my admin account to manage domain names. I wanna go over to, oh, where is it? In account and then domains and manage domains. And here you can see the team have set up a number of different domain names in various, various states of being verified or not being verified. And so if I wanna create a new domain, I just go ahead and add a new domain. But there's a couple of steps that I gotta do before that will even work. I've gotta verify that I actually own this domain and I've got to have access to the DNS for that domain as well. And that's actually the first thing that I need to do. I need to make sure that I've got DNS. Now, I want to go to Cloudflare first, which is the best place to register and host your, uh, your domain name because Cloudflare gives you wholesale rates for your account. And I'm going to see, hopefully I can get a, uh, will it give me a, a passcode here? Will it let me do that? No. All right. I'm going to have to manually grab a, grab a password here. But Cloudflare gives you something very cool. Cloudflare gives you wholesale rates on your domain names, which is really cool. So you'll pay pretty much the cheapest in the world for your domain name. And yeah, you end up with not only your DNS hosted, it's got an excellent, excellent DNS host, but it also gives you the ability to register your domain names and they give you wholesale prices because they don't really care about making a profit. Other people like GoDaddy, Squarespace, and all the other guys, they care about making a profit on domains. So you're gonna pay a lot more. And particularly if you're a business owner who has many domains, which these are just our IT genius domains, we've got a million other ones as well, they do add up over time. So we're gonna add a domain to Cloudflare. This is something that is pretty common process that you'll need to go through if you own a domain and you wanna get started with Cloudflare. It's really simple, you sign up for account, you hit add domain. And uh, this one is actually, I think it's test, I think it's testgenius.com. I've actually gotta go find, let's go find where it is. Uh, it's in my reseller account. And let's see which one it is, testgenius.co. Okay, cool, so that's the domain we're gonna use. We're gonna put that into Cloudflare. Now, if you've already got hosting set up, on this domain name, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go and scan your DNS records. This domain name is currently not being used, so it's going to probably just start from scratch. It'll ask you to pay for a plan, but there's a free plan down the bottom. And the free plan is absolutely adequate for most businesses. If you've got a high traffic website or you want additional web firewall type features, then I would recommend you consider the, the just the pro plan, I think it is, it's like 20 bucks a month. 
that's that's fine for any small business. Only if you are a, a mid market or a large enterprise and you need you know real advanced features, we don't even bother to be honest. Then there's the plans that are two hundred dollars a month and up, but they're they're only really people that need enterprise features. For most people, free is fine. Maybe for like your primary website, you pay the twenty bucks a month. But then for any other domain name that you own, you just leave it on the free plan. Add on domains, anything that's not your primary site or primary domain, you probably don't need to bother with anything else, which is very cool. So Cloudflare, they make their money as a as a web firewall. And what that means is Cloudflare are a global company. I assume they were started in the US, but their their business is as a web firewall, like a web content delivery network. And they do a lot of application hosting for the front end of websites. Lots of really nerdy stuff about making your website run fast. So they don't really care about domain registrations and earning revenue from them because the more domains they have on their network, the more money they're going to make from the small percentage of customers that upgrade to paid plans for other things. So it's a massive freemium model. I don't think they'll ever charge for domains to try and make a profit out of it. So I don't think it's the kind of thing where after 10 years, I'll say, oh, okay, now we're going to start ratcheting up the price on domains. They make so much money from the other things they don't need to. And their focus is on other things rather than trying to undercut domain providers. They just believe that domains should be a good price. So they provide them to everyone for nearly free, which is very cool. So going into my setup here, usually it would find a bunch of records. It says there's no records here because this domain is not currently being used but I'll continue to activation. Yeah, but it's going to warn me, oh, you've got no records, that's fine. Uh, and uh, then it's going to ask me to update my name servers. So now usually this is going to break things if you don't know what you're doing. So be, so be very careful with this because if, if you are changing name servers, you're pointing your domain name to Cloudflare and that means that you're telling everyone in the world where your DNS is hosted. I'm not going to go into the detail on, on every one of these records. We've got a bunch of videos on the channel on DNS guides and getting your records perfect and all that kind of thing. But this is showing the process of transferring a domain, which if you followed that first process correctly, nothing should go wrong with your website because it should read all of your public records and then fill them into Cloudflare. And then when you change the name service here, the work is done for you. In the old days, if you were transitioning to GoDaddy or someone like that, what you would have to do is you would have to copy all the records one by one, put them in the new DNS host, and then you would change the name servers and then everything would work once it was uh, once it was moved over. But Cloudflare, in most cases, does it for us. So it tells us, all right, these are the old name servers. You're going to delete them and put in Alex and Leah. So I'm going to go to my portal here and we're going to change our name servers. Alex and Leah. There we go. Oops. Cool. All right. So that's now done. And thankfully, our wholesale account here moves pretty quickly and deploys DNS name service pretty quickly. But if you were ever interested to know to how to check your domain propagation of DNS servers, you go to what's my what's my DNS.net. And if your domain name is ever doing something screwy, this is where you can go and check and check, you know, is it actually propagating around the world or not? So I go here and I put in testgenius.co. I choose name servers because I want to check the name servers. And this will tell me all around the world who is reporting the correct name servers or the incorrect name servers. Now, sometimes <clears throat> the search is a bit screwy. So you've got to do it a couple of times. And you can see here, a number of these are actually still reporting the old records. Some of them are reporting nothing, which is a bit Weird, I don't know, maybe just because the domain's been dormant for years and years and years. But what this should do now is because I've just updated them here with my uh, host, it should send a little ping, send a little signal out to everyone in the world that, hey, this domain name's got new name servers. And typically this happens pretty quickly, as in within a couple of minutes. Ideally, we want it to show up correctly in this search before we then go back to Cloudflare and we ask it to check the domains. But sometimes, just sometimes it'll happen immediately and then we can go to Cloudflare and we can say, hey, yep, I've got this done. But I, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait because I wanna make sure that this propagation has actually happened. If this propagation hasn't happened, there's, there's probably not much point trying to get Cloudflare to, to check it. Anyway, I'm gonna leave that for a minute. So what we'll do is we'll go into the admin panel and we'll start setting up the domain here. So in our domains here in the admin panel, I'm going to add domain. I'm going to put in the new domain name, test 
genius.co. And if you're a watcher of the channel, you should know by now that a secondary domain is what we're after here. That means I've got the ability to change my email address to this domain as my primary domain if I want. If I was to use an alias domain, it would just make testgenius.co an alias for everything else that's in this Google Workspace account, all of the users, and that's not what I want. I want, I want all the other staff to keep their domain names. I just wanna make testgenius the primary for me, for now, and if the other team members choose to, they can also change theirs uh, to this domain as well. Anyway, I'm gonna use a secondary domain and you know what, I probably shouldn't even click the next button here because we've got to get Cloudflare working before we do that. Okay, so let's go back and see if this domain is propagated. Generally only takes a couple of minutes. Oh no, it still says it's not propagating. Okay, well, wait and come back to it later. This is the first part of the video. If you're interested, feel free to check out part two.